What's up everyone? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Journey to Master and today we're going to talk about taking tests and how to take your electrician exam. All right, so <laughs> taking tests is probably one of the most frightening things for people, especially when it's something that you have tried for for four years, five years, you've been learning everything, you've been trying to figure out code, maybe you've been taking classes, but it's kind of a nerve wracking thing. And you don't get the fortune of going and being in the environment where you're taking the test as like a practice run. There might be some places, trade schools or whatever, that are gonna give you a simulated test environment. That's cool as shit because at least that gives you something to go off of. But for most people, they're gonna end up in that room for the very first time with a test in front of them that is timed. So one thing to really think about is the importance of this test is not that you know everything in the National Electrical Code Book. It's an open, code, or it's an open book test. So what that means is they're trying to figure out if you can find information and they put a time limit on it because they're trying to figure out how quickly you can time or find information. And the reason for that is if you're on a job somewhere and you have to find information in the code book, it's like you have to be able to reasonably efficiently on a job site figure out like how many wires can I put in a four inch pancake? You know, what's the cubic inch diameter, the cubic inch volume of this specific box? You have to be able to find that information. And if it takes you four hours to find a basic question like that, you're not ready to be out on your own. That's the philosophy behind how they're testing you. So remember that it is a timed test, that it's open book, and that really what you're trying to find is everything that is on the test within four hours. Uh, some of them are five. It may be different in your state. In Texas, at least, we have a couple of different licenses that you may not have in your state. We have a residential wireman's license. We have a lot of things like master sign electrician, journeyman sign electrician, things like that. There's a lot of different electrical licenses that you could take or take tests for. Um, but the first one in Texas that you can test for is after two years or 4,000 hours, you can test to be a residential wireman. Basically, this is saying you're not journeyman, you're not unrestricted, you can't do commercial work and all that, you can't run those kinds of jobs because you still need a lot more experience. But you're proving yourself in this test to at least know enough to be able to do some house rough-ins and some trim outs. Um, and that you can have another apprentice with you because you're, you know, you, you're just specific to that one environment. And uh, it's also a four hour test. The journeyman is a four hour test as well. In Texas, it's a, it's a four hour unrestricted journeyman test. The residential is 80 questions. It may be like 83 or 84. A lot of years they'll put just random questions in there that don't matter, but they're just trying to see how people answer these questions. And they're just trying to figure out new questions. So sometimes they'll throw 83 in, but you're only scored on 80 of them. You just don't know which of the three are. So you kind of have to treat it like they're, it's all of them. Uh, the journeyman is 100 questions and it's four hours long, so you have a lot more things that you're trying to cover, um, more like conduit fill and sizing services and, and things along that nature, but nothing too crazy. The master is five hours long and it's 100 questions, again, in Texas, um, and that's you know 12,000 hours. Journeyman's 8,000 hours, master is 12,000 hours. Um, but it takes a long time. You have a site plan in front of you. You have to figure out really complex services like what do you do in a farm, you know, or what like if you're doing an RV park. Really just bizarre things that are located in the code book that you've never read before. Most of the stuff that you come across in Texas on the master at the time of this recording is bizarre shit because they want to know how good are you really at finding this information and how good are you at knowing how to use the information from several different parts all over the code book to come up with a very complicated answer, highly mathematical and, and using tables and charts and referencing a lot of things. Um, the journeyman is like a baby version of that. You know, they're going to give you a site plan again. It might be like a shopping center with multiple different things like a laundry mat and a set of office buildings. And they're going to try to figure out like if you know how to identify a service and where this sub panel is and what this transformer's voltage is or its KVA rating. Um, so a little bit more involved. But anyways, the idea of just taking the test and how you take the test is this. There's a method to it. Considering that it's timed, you only have a certain amount of time to answer each question. If it's the 80 or if it's the 100, I don't remember. It's something like two and a half to three minutes per question. So keep that in mind. 
If you spend five to 10 minutes on one question, you're really screwing yourself over. Because if at the end of it, if you have questions that you haven't answered, you get every one of them wrong. And I've seen people fail tests, get everything right that they answered, but fail because they didn't finish the test. And that is crushing. So what I recommend people do is you, you wanna go through the test one time through at first and you try to answer the things that you just know off the bat, the easy shit. What you're trying to do at this point is you're trying to familiarize yourself with the test and you're, you're trying to see what is this thing that I'm looking at and you want to get a huge, a, a good like snapshot of the entirety of the test. So you always want to go through one time first. I wouldn't spend any more than a minute. If you can spend 30 seconds on a question and you know that you're going to get it right, don't answer it if you don't think you're going to get it right. I'm talking about batting a home run for sure. You're going to get this right. So go through the entire test, try to spend 30 seconds to a minute or, or less um, on every single question. In Texas, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but in Texas, you can mark questions and you don't have to answer them, but once you mark them, they stay in the marked section. So you can come back to them later. And I like to mark things that I know I can, that I, that I know that I can find easily. Those are the ones that I mark. I mark everything for a very specific purpose and everything that is marked is of that same purpose. So what you're gonna do once you've gone through the entire test all the way to the end is you're gonna start over and do the same thing again. But this time you're only gonna spend about two, to, two and a half to three minutes and you're gonna try to find everything that's kinda code easy. Stuff that you think that you can find relatively easy. Not stuff that's talking about like crazy calculations and trying to calculate the service for an entire dwelling or multifamily unit. That's gonna take you 10 minutes. There's like 10 parts in the code that you have to figure out all the different, you know, overcurrent protection device. You have to figure out the service, you know, uh, uh, the service entrance conductors. You have to figure out what kind of loads are in the building. Um, AC, heating, dishwashers. Like you have to figure all these things out so it's a time waster. That's the purpose of these questions is a time waster. It's there to make you a little nervous. Skip all of that shit. On your second round of going through this test, you're just looking for uh, basic stuff that, you know, it's like what, uh, how many plugs do you put in a house? If it's a 1500 square foot house, you know, like that's a relatively easy thing to find the answer to. It's on one page, you know, or like what is the ADA recommendations? There's probably not going to be ADA stuff on the test because a lot of the indexes in the back and the, the, uh, the informative indexes and the informational notes are not testable. So it's really only chapters one through eight. And I have another video that I'm going to come out with uh, coming up where it talks more about like how to understand the code book and how to know what sections things are in. But this is where you're trying to find very specific things that you know that you can find quickly. If there's something that by three minutes that you can't find and it's stumping you that bad, skip it because you're gonna go through this test one more time. But you're again, just maximizing your time and your efficiency and getting the majority of the questions answered, marking the ones, if in your state that's a possibility, I think it is in most places, but marking the ones that you think with a high amount of certainty that if you spent five minutes, you could get that answer right. And then the, the final thing that you're gonna do is go a third time through this test. On your third time, this is where you're going to spend a lot of time. You're gonna spend that five minutes if you need to, to ensure that you're getting the marked questions right. The ones that you know where they're at, you have come across them before, you've taken practice tests and you know you can find this, you just have to figure that out. But if there is things like, uh, that require a large amount of calculation that aren't simple basic you know, calculations, I would completely skip them a hundred percent. Just don't even worry about answering any of those because by the end of it, you're probably going to have about 10 questions left that you just are lost in the sauce about. You have no idea how to answer. And you're, what you're going to do is you might be there three hours at this point and you got an hour left and you got, you know, 15 questions and there's something you're going to spend 10 minutes a piece on. Spend all of that time and answer everything. By the time that you get to, I don't know, the last 30 minutes of the test, you should be done with the test. If like all of my tests, uh, I've been probably an hour to 30 minutes where I was done early, but I stayed there. I answered every question, the ones that I knew that I was gonna get wrong and I had tried and tried and I just could not find the answer. I just, I just guessed. So your most of the questions, not most of them, a lot of these questions are like 50% obvious, 50% non-obvious. It's multiple choice. So there's going to be four questions or four, uh, four options in there. If you can look at something 
in the code book because you're trying to find this whole thing and you can find with a pretty decent amount of certainty that it's not these two things, that gives you a 50-50 guess on the last two. So your chances of getting it right, even if you just for the last five questions go B, 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 you're probably gonna get a couple of those right. So that helps, but do not, absolutely do not walk away from that test without answering every question. If you get so pissed off, you're four hours in and you've only answered 10 questions, I mean, you're screwed first off, but you might as well see it up. Just see, 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 see. Answer every question. I know that's terrible advice. Like You don't ever wanna go into a test and just do that. You wanna be as, again, as studied, as ready, as prepared as you can be. But be smart about it. Know that it's timed. And that's the most crucial part. And do not walk away. Do not walk away without answering every single thing. If you've answered everything and you've got an hour to kill and you just want to like go get a beer with your buddies, sit back down. Sit down and go through that entire test. That's another thing I've done. If I'm 30 minutes to an hour before my time runs out, I go back to one and I take a fourth round through that test. And it sucks, yeah, because you're just wasting another hour of your life. But I will find things that I was like, oh shit, I totally did not even realize I pushed C instead of pushed B. Or I'll go through and reread the ones that I marked because those, again, are the, are the ones that I'm a little iffy, but I thought that I could find. The, the last time that you go through the test, you're going to be unmarking things as you're answering them to know I got this right. This is out of the way, 100% certain this is the right answer. So that you're going to end at the end with like maybe five of them that are still marked. But those are the ones that I would spend the most amount of time like really going through and thinking about your answer. So it's just, it's really crucial to go over your answers. I have a wife who's like an all-star in, in school. Um, she just, she always did really well in her classes, always took AP stuff. And one thing that she always told me is that she double checks her math. The, only, the reason that she's far better than I am at math is because she's careful and she double checks herself and she goes back and checks everything. If she's taking a test, she doesn't just like whip through it and then go hand it in. She goes through it and finds all of her mistakes and corrects everything and reworks it in her mind to, and she gets a really good grade. So the same thing applies if you're taking this test. You're taking a test that you're paying, I don't know, like maybe 80 bucks in some states, maybe 150, maybe 200, but you're paying a lot of money to do this and this is your career, so take this shit seriously. Um, so again, I just wanna reiterate, it is a timed open book test. They're trying to find how quickly you can find information and find accurate information. And they're not expecting you to know anything or everything. Nobody that I know knows the entire code book. I know some guys that are on the code making panel and they can get through code book very, very quickly and they can throw out some numbers like they're Bible verses, like they're a preacher. But those are few and far between. Like most people in the field, the book changes every three years, you know? So you're not going to know everything. On that note, last tip that I have for you. In Texas, at least, when you go in, they're going to look at your test, your, your uh, code book. So don't bring a code book in there that you haven't checked to make sure what the requirements for everything are. In Texas, you can't have pieces of paper stuck in there with anything written on them. You can write on the pages, but you can't have paragraphs of information. They're going to check because that's cheating. That's like you could be writing test questions down. You know, you could be writing entire like things that are notes from a handbook. So in Texas, you can't use the handbook. The handbook is the hard covered, far more expensive version of the NEC, which would be dope because it's got much further explanations. It's got pictures and it's all in color. The, the, the handbooks are really awesome. Um, I recommend that you get one again, just to have because there's more information in, in a handbook. But the problem is you can't take it in and test in Texas. At least you have to bring the white $99, you know, red covered 2017 NEC code book. But depending on what year you're taking this and where we are in the code cycle, you may be able to get away with an earlier code book and take an earlier version of the test. So when I went in, I just took the 2017 because I'd already had a 2017 book, but there was new codes in 2017. So I had to brush myself up on these new codes to be able to take this new test with a new code book. And that was fine, but the option was there for me to take the 2014 test and bring my 2014 book in, which I knew far more. So that's another thing to just kind of, you know, consider when you're doing all of this. Um, you can't have any extraneous tabs anywhere. You can't have anything shoved in code books. There's actually some people out there that 
charge good money for code classes and the advice that they tell you is to sneak in these little laminated cards that they give you for graciously paying for their $500 course somewhere. And they give you these little cheat sheets and their serious advice is try to hide this shit when you get in there. Stick it in there really good so when they shake the book it doesn't fall out. That's a bunch of bullshit. This is about you and your knowledge and whether or not you studied hard enough and whether or not you're ready to be out there in a dangerous environment putting together something that is highly, you know, like that kills people. You could kill a family, you could kill yourself, you could kill employees, workers, you can burn people's houses down, you can bankrupt companies. Uh, take the shit seriously and learn it and know it and don't fucking cheat on it and uh, don't short sell yourself short. Do your best, man. I have complete faith that if I can do this, you can do this. You just got to spend the time doing it. If you guys need any help whatsoever, I'm here. So feel free to leave comments below. Hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Join the Electrical Wizardry group. Anything. But get at me and I can help you along with some of this stuff. But take this shit seriously because this is your career. And passing this thing and failing it, although you get another chance at it, passing this test is going to change your life. If you have a journeyman card right now, it's like gold. And you can take that thing to pretty much any company that you want to, name your price, you know, within a certain limit. Um, but you have a job. I mean, construction is booming. Service industry is booming right now. Like, you, you have work. This trade is amazing because of that, because everybody needs electricity. Electricity is such an important thing in our society. So uh, take this shit seriously. I promise you'll do well. Um, Watch this two or three times if you need to because I realize it's packed with a lot of information. But I love you people. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.